All right, so this is the this is the bike I'm riding. This is the KLX 300. I actually thought about buying one of these, and it's the major competitor for the CRF 300. So there is a supermoto version that Greg will be riding, and I'll be riding the dirt version, the dual sport version, and it's got all the blinkers, it's got all the good stuff. And it, this one is fuel injected. So for the longest time, Kawasaki had this bike being carbureted. And now finally, it's fuel injected. And I expect it's gonna ride very smoothly, like a 300. All right, look at that, sitting on it, kind of like a, a tall, tallish bike, but the suspension is very soft, very soft. I actually like this bike a lot for most dual sporting. Look at that, everybody's ready. Oh, I guess I can start it, okay. All right, so it's in neutral. You got a digital gauge, the odometer, only 2,000 miles. Suspension is very soft. I think if you're gonna do some um, big off-roading you want to stiffen up the suspension but I'm very surprised that this is fuel injected of course they're trying to keep up with the uh, Honda CRF CRF 300 now CRF 300 L there we go there goes the KLX 300 Supermoto alrighty look at that we're off <laughs> and we're stuck in traffic sitting position oh man this is just so tiny compared to the uh, super 10 right all right actually very smooth transmission very smooth transmission you will be able to do like a 20 mile ride which is uh, pretty darn nice and here we go we're gonna go to the right this is a very interesting thumper it feels pretty good not having a windscreen i think the big question is why would you get the klx 300 over the crf 300 for me I think if there's uh, if this costs less then I would get it but the CRF 300 has got a better resale value because it is a Honda the engine doesn't sound that good going at this speed there we go <laughs> I think this is a six-speed transmission as well. It doesn't have like the kick in the pan sort of um, power. So that's the Kawasaki Z900 RS. How do you like it, man? It has a lot of power. Yeah, this one doesn't make a lot of power at all. So modes you have what strip A, strip B, odometer, and then you you have your reset, you have your clock very simple bike there's nothing in here so it, it feels like a very antiquated bike but that's not necessarily a bad thing when you have something antiquated you have your dummy lights here you have your engine over there very simple I was kind of shocked to find out that the KLR 650 oil filter is a it's not a cartridge based oil filter it's just like the paper element that goes in the engine this one is i don't know i i like the idea of having a 250 for a dual sport because most people they're going to be riding a 250 is perfect i mean this thing will get around just fine on a trail now is the 300 worth buying instead of a, the older 250 so the older 250 from Kawasaki, it's carbureted and it's been carbureted for a very long time. There we go. Yeah, learning a different bike's clutch is a little bit... This bike actually kind of feels like the engine 
I think the valves on this might be a little bit off I hear a little bit of tapping in the engine this has got a stock exhaust so it doesn't sound good that Z900 sounds good the four cylinders always sound good This is the type of bike that every time you shift, you have to give it a full throttle and it's not going to go anywhere. So my Ninja 250 felt much smoother. Of course, it was a two cylinder. I could not trust this bike on the highway because it is just too slow. It feels slow. It would be nice if we got on the highway so we can see how these bikes behave on the highway. But I think that's fine. I kind of realize that this is a little bit of an underpowered bike for the highway use finally a corner <laughs> uh... yeah like when it comes to supermotos you gotta have a little bit more power Uh -oh. You know, these bikes are effortless to ride. It doesn't require a lot to ride these things. They make great beginner bikes, but I think what I like about these, the 300s that are out now, in a time where everything is just so complex, it is nice that Kawasaki, for example, is giving people bikes that are simple and just uh, very easy to get and inexpensive. I like the suspension. You can't expect really great suspension on these bikes. And especially like the type of riders that would get this that are overweight. This thing is not meant for an overweight rider at the current suspension specs. So you would have to increase the spring strength transmission is very smooth but I, I've gotten plenty of Kawasaki's and it tends to become a little bit vague towards the end you know like as you're riding it gets a little vague like it doesn't know what gear it's in right now with this transmission it's fine if you're picking between the CRF 300 and the KLX 300 I think that's a, um, a difficult decision so it's all just kind of name brand because they're essentially almost the same bike but I still prefer the CRF 250 just because you can get like a really good used price on it but not these days anymore all right that's the end of the uh, the ride So a pretty fun bike, very underpowered, upside down forks, not very adjustable when it comes to suspension. The fuel injection is pretty decent. It's got a cover for the um, rear brake caliper. I do like the graphics a lot. So the 250 prior to this was carbureted. This one is fuel injection and this looks like the same sort of the carb that's on the new KLR. That's where the cam chain tensioner is. This tends to go out on a lot of these bikes but you can get a manual one. Very simple like this. That kind of looks almost like the pitster. One of the mods that people will do is they will get hydraulic clutches and they will put them on here and it works really well you can get like the Chinese hydraulic clutches really cheap that's Manassas Honda demo day